Time for the second video in our series, and I have the good fortune today of speaking with Associate Professor of Psychology and Cognitive Neuroscience, Sonia Bishop, uh, who's connecting with me from London, uh, where she has been this academic year. Uh, Professor Bishop, thank you for taking some time with us, and I hope everything is uh, well with you in London right now. Yes, thank you. Big news um, out of there. We'll touch on that uh, shortly. Um, you study anxiety, and that's a great equalizer right now, everybody feeling some level um, of it. Uh, can you tell us how that affects uh, people differently, and what impact does that have on our decision making? Yes. Um, so many people may be finding that they're experiencing anxiety for the first time in the current situation as um, the number of people um, impacted by it tends to vary both based on our own characteristics and traits, but also based on the exposure to stressful life events. And currently that's something that all of us are sort of struggling to deal with. Um, but it does vary across people. There are some people um, who have more sort of optimistic biases. And so that's something which we uh, uh, know in the literature as being something which can impact decision making. So particularly when um, situations involve a lot of uncertainty, um, such as the current one of COVID-19, where we can't necessarily precisely quantify how likely people are to catch it or how bad it may be if you get it, then there's a lot of range for people to make different estimates. Uh, in decision making, we normally rely on our own previous experience in order to update our estimates of how likely something is to happen, how bad it will be, how much effort we should put in to avoid it. But in situations like this, we may not have that prior experience to rely on. And so instead, what we tend to do is something called model-based decision making, where we uh, try and simulate um, how likely something is to happen using our ability to effectively imagine the scenario happening or to use our memories to sort of draw out something relevant. And so for some people, perhaps particularly younger people, uh, they may find it very hard to imagine themselves getting seriously sick. And so they may still be feeling somewhat invulnerable and that in turn may impact on their behavior in this situation. Any strategies that you could share on managing uh, that level of anxiety, channeling it in positive directions uh, or recognizing when those um, tools are working against us? Yeah, so for those of us who are experiencing anxiety, um, a lot of the mechanisms which are involved in the worry we may be experiencing are also those which are involved in planning. So what we may find is rather than being able to focus on what we're meant to be doing, we'll be worrying a lot about things. So there one technique we can try and do is to put off that kind of uncontrolled worrying to one time a day and say it's only then we're going to allow ourselves to do it. And at other times to try and focus on more uh, practical um, planning. So uh, thinking about what things can we do with our kids, for example, what board games might we purchase online or can we do exercise in VR together, trying to find some fun and lightness and also healthiness in, in what we're doing. Thank you. Any strategies for our students uh, that are at home um, and all students right now across um, a good chunk of the world are having to uh, study and live at home. They probably weren't expecting that uh, different life experience frame of reference and uh, life situation. What should they know about managing this? Absolutely. So um, this situation is going to be differentially challenging for different individuals. Some students will have returned home to their families. Uh, some people may have uh, easier envir environments to navigate than others. Uh, we know that some of our students, are, one of my students was describing how she has to share a room of two siblings. And so they take it in turn to be able to uh, sort of tune into Zoom meetings and comments so they don't distract each other. So um, we need to basically, as professors or as faculty, I think try and really recognize those stresses and place less demands on students in this time. Um, from their own side, I think really just focusing on being healthy, trying not to worry too much, trying to keep going, um, but hopefully um, knowing that there will be a degree of flexibility in their schools and if necessary, reaching out to ask for that flexibility if it hasn't been given. Thank you very much and thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, please stay safe and we'll look forward to having you back on campus soon. Thank you. Take care.